Hi guys, it's your girl Duwana here again with another so long, but this time for my Nomi pattern ME2042. I love those ruffles. I think it's so fun. I think it's something that you can go out with, have fun with. You know, it's 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 you can make it casual, you can make it more dressy. I mean, it's, it is what you want to do with it. And I do love the off shoulder. If you're not an off shoulder person, you can add straps to it. And I think that's something I might do when I hack it up later this summer, because I think that's going to be looking so cute. I think the straps with maybe this, the shortened sleeve just to kind of, you know, get really into the summer. I think that will be a nice little hack. The suggested fabrics, you don't want to get too heavy with the fabrics now. You want to get something that's a little lighter, you know, something that's like cotton shirting. I actually ended up using organza fabric for the so long, so stay tuned for that. So the instructions also ask for 3 8 inch boning. Now, listen, I actually don't own that. I own like one half inch and one quarter inch, and... I think that either one works fine. You just might have to adjust a little bit. Also, the one that I really like to use is the sew-on boning. The sew-on boning is the one that I feel like with this type of pattern, because you're using a lighter weight fabric, it helps to keep it a lot sturdier. And I don't know if I'm, that's true, but for me, it has always worked out with a sew-on boning. So if you use a sew-on boning, it's surely gonna be a lot better because you're using a lighter weight fabric for this. All right, so without delay, let's get started on my sew along for my pattern ME2042. All right, so let's get a closer look of my pattern ME2042. You have view A, the dress, we have view B, a top, and view C, the pants. I just love those ruffles. One thing I like to point out in the back is the finished garment measurements, which are actually going to be found in the sewing instructions this time. Um, but I also wanted to point out that I am going to be sewing view A. And so when you're looking at the measurements, make sure that you go as close to your body measurements as possible to get the perfect fit. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at our pattern pieces. So let's take a look at the pattern pieces that we need. First, we're going to need pattern piece number one, the bodice front. And we are going to cut two of these and two of lining. All right, so now we're going to need pattern piece number two. This is the bodice back. And you're going to also cut two of those and then two of the lining. Pattern piece number three. This is the bodice side back. And you're going to cut two of those and two of lining as well. All right, so this is pattern piece number four, the tie end. You're also going to need two of these cut, but if you're doing a contrast, you're also going to need two. This is pattern piece number five. This is the front facing, and you're going to need two of those and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number six. This is the back facing. You're need, going to need two of those and two of interfacing. All right, this is pattern piece number seven. This is the skirt front, and you're gonna cut two of those on fabric. Pattern piece number eight, this is the welt, and you're gonna cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number nine, this is the pocket, and you're gonna cut two of these. Pocket piece number 10, this is the pocket lining, and you're gonna cut two of these. Pocket piece number 11, this is the skirt back, and you're gonna cut two of these. This is pattern piece number 12, this is the placket, and you're gonna cut two of those of fabric and two on interfacing. Pattern piece number 13, the sleeve front, and you're gonna cut two of those. Pattern piece number 14, this is the sleeve back, and you're also going to cut two of those. All right, so we got pattern piece number 15, this is the sleeve ruffle, and you're going to cut two of these. Pattern piece number 16, this is the elastic guide for the sleeve, and you're going to cut two of these. And lastly, pattern piece number 17, this is the elastic guide for the arm, and you're going to cut two of those. All right, let's take a look at our fabric. Here's the main fabric. I'm using an organza fabric. And then here's the lining. I'm using an organza for the lining. And a fusible featherweight interfacing. Share weight would also work as well. 
I also have some boning. This is one half inch, but I might switch over to the one fourth inch, but you really need three eighths of an inch. And here is some double fold bias tape. We need some one fourth inch elastic. And lastly, buttons, but I'm using pearl snaps. All right, so let's cut out our pieces and get started. First, you're gonna go ahead and pin the darts of the front bodice and make sure when you are pinning, you are putting the lines together and you're also starting from the raw edge and working your way towards the point. So again, we're just gonna be stitching the raw edge to the point for each of our darts. And so now we're gonna go ahead and take this to the sewing machine. When stitching your dart, once you get about one inch away from the point, curve in and stitch as close to the edge as possible without back stitching. This helps to avoid puckering. Because I'm using organza fabric, I also trimmed my darts down as close to the seam as possible, just so you don't see um, that extra fabric from the dart. So now we're gonna pin the bodice back sections together at the center back. Stitch the bodice back sections together at the center back. I also trimmed the seams on this one as well, just so it's a lot cleaner. But even with all that, make sure you're also pressing your seams open. Pin the bodice side back sections to the side edges of the bodice back. And once you're done pinning, go ahead and stitch. Now that's done, let's put this aside and we're gonna take the tie ends and with right sides together, you're gonna fold the tie end in half lengthwise, and you're gonna stitch about one fourth of an inch seam, leaving the ends with the symbols open. I also turned it with a loop turner, and I also pressed it because it definitely will need pressing. And also the side that I left open was the side with the symbols, so I'm gonna put that aside for a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin the ends to the side edges of the back. So now you're gonna go ahead and baste the tie ends to the back. And with right sides facing, you're gonna stitch the front sections to the back at the sides, being careful not to catch the free edges of the ends in the stitching. So now that that's done, make sure it's pressed nicely. And now you're gonna go ahead and get your lining pieces. So in the interest of time, I already stitched the darts on the front bodice, as you can see, and I trimmed the bodice um, darts. And then I also put the back lining pieces together as well. And I did not trim um, the seam allowances here because that's where I'm gonna be adding boning. Pin the front lining sections to the back lining at the sides. And then you're gonna stitch those together. So for my casings, I'm gonna be using bias tape and this is double fold, but also you wanna make sure that your seams are facing towards the back. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take the bias tape and I'm going to basically cover the seam allowance with it. And this is where I'm going to use to pass my boning through. I don't necessarily need the length of the seam allowance that's in the organza fabric anymore, so I'm just gonna trim those down and they're gonna be replaced by the bias tape.
And so once I have pinned those on there, I'm going to stitch at the very edge. I really love using this for organza fabric just because it makes it also look really clean and also it just kind of brings out the fabric a little because it is see through and so you'll see what I mean when it all comes together. Once you're done with that you're going to basically fold it make sure that it's facing towards the center back and you're going to just top stitch. So this is what it should look like when you're done. So before you pass your bonings through, you always want to stitch about a seam allowance away from the raw edge of the casing just to keep those uh, bonings in place. So now you're going to pass your boning through. You may have noticed that I've switched out the boning. This is a half inch boning. The instructions call for three eighths. I only had a one half inch and a one quarter inch. So I'm going to use the one quarter inch instead because it fits a lot better and that's okay. You also want to cut off about a seam allowance worth of boning at the bottom. So I marked it and then I cut it and then slid the rest of the boning through. Another cool thing about the boning that I use is that you can stitch on top of it. It is a sew on boning. So what I like to do after I've placed my boning inside is that I am going to um, stitch on top of that boning on the other side of the casing just to secure it in place. Also, don't forget to enclose your boning at the bottom just to make sure it doesn't slide out. All right, so now take your other um, fabric, which is your main fabric, and now you're going to pin the back together at the circle. All right, and so I'm gonna pin around this circle cutout and then I'm going to stitch that together. So now you're gonna turn it over and you are gonna understitch the lining. So now let's take this to the sewing machine so I can show you how to do it. When you're under stitching, you want to make sure that the seam allowance is facing towards the lining and you're basically stitching on top of the lining. So now you're going to base the upper and armhole edges. Put this aside and grab the sleeves. So the first part of the sleeve that you're going to need is the sleeve ruffle. And what you're going to do with right sides together, you're going to fold the sleeve ruffle along the fold line and you're going to stitch those ends and trim. So after you've trimmed the end, you're going to turn it around and you're going to baste and stay stitch the raw edges. Make sure you also press it so it's nice and flat. And now on the outside, you're going to pin the sleeve ruffle to the outer curved edge of the sleeve front. It's a good idea that since the front and back pieces look the same, that you label them. Um, I just labeled the front ones um, and then I'll know which one the back ones are. Those are the unlabeled ones. <laughs> Make sure you're matching notches, but you're now going to go ahead and pin those sleeve ruffles to the outer curved edge of the sleeve front. Go ahead and stitch those together. Go ahead and grab your back side and with right sides together, you're going to pin the sleeve back to the sleeve front over the ruffle, matching any symbols and notches. You're of course going to do this for both sleeve pieces. Go ahead and stitch those together. Now that both sides are stitched together, you're going to go ahead and grab the double fold bias tape again. Now this part I actually changed up on the instructions and I'll show why. 
So I added the bias tape at the edge um, just because I know that passing the elastic is going to need to be sturdy. And so bias tape is just my replacement casing for the elastic. So I, instead of doing it in the, the way the instructions recommended, I thought that this way would secure the elastic a lot better. So I passed the elastic through with a pin and I'm going to pass it all the way at the end. As soon as I get to the end, I'm going to stitch the elastic in place. What I also like to do is just stretch out the sleeve as much as possible so it gets its full length. And then you can also hem the bottom one time if you want. Look at those ruffles. This is my favorite part of this pattern. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the elastic to the top of the sleeve. But before I add the actual elastic, I'm going to first do the casing for it like I did for the sleeve. And I'm going to go ahead and pass the elastic through. Now, keep in mind, there are guides for the elastic, um, but I actually don't like using guides. I go based on my body because I know that um, I have wider shoulders, I may need a little bit more elastic, or I may want to shorten the elastic depending on how I want it to fit. So go by the guide or you can go by your body. It doesn't really matter. So now with right sides together, I'm going to pin the sleeve to the armhole edge, matching the seams. So if you match your notches correctly, you will notice that there's a little room at the top. Now go ahead and stitch those together and do that for both sides. All right, because I'm using organza fabric and it's see-through, I decided to not use the front and back facing pieces. And instead, I'm gonna show you how I um, replaced that with bias tape. If you're doing this with organza, you will need a lot of bias tape but if you're not you're not going to need as much bias tape because i'm only using the bias tape to make sure that my boning was secure that my elastic is secure and that i can seal my ends without it looking crazy looky here it is all done and it looks nice and clean and it is looking good and we're almost done here the last part is now the skirt and so we're going to put this aside and get started on the skirt. So there are a lot of markings here, but first we're going to take our focus to the dart in the front skirt. And we're going to go ahead and pin it. And once we're done pinning, we're going to go ahead and stitch it again from the raw edge to the point. Like the darts in the bodice, I also trimmed the dart just so you can't see it on the other side. And now I'm going to go ahead and tackle my welt pockets. Here are my welt pieces. It is already interfaced and marked. So I've already folded it. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and baste the raw edges together. I stitched around my entire stitching line just to make it more secure. But now you're gonna go ahead and pin the welt to the skirt front placing the seam line along the lower stitching line, matching the symbols as shown. Because I stitched around the entire stitching line, it did take a, a little bit of my fabric um, away, so I just focused on matching the large dots and that seemed to work, work out beautifully for me. Okay, so go ahead and baste that together. With right sides together, you're gonna pin the pocket lining to the skirt front over the welt, and I also used my um, organza for my pocket lining just because I didn't want to see an overlapping of prints too much. And so I used that. And you're just going to stitch it together. And here's just a closer look at it. You want to make sure that your dots are matching. And when stitching my welt to my skirt, I stitch on the back side because it's just a lot easier to line up the welt with the markings on the skirt a lot better. Now with right sides together, you're gonna to pin the pocket to the skirt, placing the seam line along the upper stitching line, and you're gonna base that. 
Now I'm going to go and slash along the line between the stitching, but first I'm going to mark it just so I know exactly where I'm cutting. You also want to be really careful when you cut because you don't want to cut past the stitching line. I found that with welts, this is the most important part to make sure that you get perfect. Once you've slashed that center part, you're going to flip over or turn over your pocket so that it's on the inside. And I would go ahead and press your weld just to make sure that it's nice and flat. So now you're going to stitch your pocket edges together, catching the welts and triangular ends in the stitching, keeping the skirt free. This is what it should look like from the back and on the front. All right, this is the welt. Make sure you do the same for the other side. We are almost at the finish line. So go ahead and grab your skirt back and we're gonna go ahead and pin the darts in the skirt back like we did for the other darts. And once again, we're gonna stitch from the raw edge all the way to the point on both of the darts. Now that that's done, you're gonna go ahead and stitch the skirt back sections together at the center back. Grab the skirt front pieces and with right sides together, you're gonna stitch the front skirt to the back skirt. And for these, you can trim down the seam allowance on the sides if you want. I decided not to for the skirt. All right, so now you're gonna go stitch those together and then you're going to attach them to the bodice. When attaching the bodice, I did change up the instructions a tad bit and you'll see in a second what I do. So instead of just attaching the bodice to the skirt at just the outside pieces, I actually attached the lining as well because I did not want to fold it in because it is organza fabric and I felt that it could it would be better sealed with the bias tape again. So that bias tape is definitely coming in handy and so I'm going to attach it to hold those pieces together. Again, the bias tape is my favorite thing about working with organza fabric. It is, it is, I think, aesthetically pleasing, but also it is a way to keep the structure strong. I also decided to hem the bottom with the bias tape as well. So I'm gonna fold it in like this. I'm gonna stitch it and then I'm gonna fold it again um, just so um, you can't see the bias tape on the outside. And what do you think? I think it looks great. So I know I've been saying we're almost done, but we are really almost done this time. So I'm gonna put this aside and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the placket. All right, so one thing with the placket, you have a certain amount of buns to use. I ended up using pearl snaps and I also ended up using more than the recommended amount of buttons. So for the placket, you're going to turn in the seam allowance on the long unnotched edge of the placket and you're gonna press it. So I already did that here. And then with right sides together, you're gonna to fold the placket along the fold line. And I like to press it just so that it stays. And then I'm going to stitch across the upper and lower edges. So now I'm gonna pin the placket to the front opening edges, having the raw edges even, and I'm gonna stitch it, keeping the pressed edge free. Once you're done stitching it to the bodice, what you're going to do is stitch in a ditch. Now you can slip stitch. I think that's a lot of slip stitching. So I'm just going to stitch in the ditch and it will be a lot faster. And now that is done. The last thing to do is add the pearl snaps. Now 
when you're adding snaps or buttons, you're going to go according to the way that your sewing machine or your tools tells you to. So I'm not gonna show those instructions, but here are the pearl snaps I decided to use. And here is the finished product. I love it. And I plan on wearing my bathing suit under here when I go to the beach next week. Make sure you clean off any markings that are left and you are done. Thanks for watching my sew along for my Nomi pattern ME2042.